So whenever I talk to mid to high handicappers, they will always say, there's no chance I can hit a blade, not in a million years, nowhere near forgiven enough, not a chance. But is that true? Well, today we're gonna to find out because we've got Steve down in the studio doing a testing for us, a mid handicap golfer playing off around 16, and I'm gonna give him an out and out game improvement iron, the Cobra Dark Speed, and an out and out muscle back blade, the Cobra MB going head to head on quad, and the results are fascinating. So stay tuned for those. Before we jump in, I've got a really, really big favor to ask of you. Currently with this channel, about 88% of people do not subscribe. So if you've ever enjoyed any of our content, if you've ever found it valuable for you and, and helped you out and given you a bit of knowledge uh, to do with clubs, please would you go down and hit that subscribe button because it will really help us grow in 2024. And I want to bring you bigger and better content than ever this year. And that subscribe account growing will massively, massively help us do that and bring you better content. And only take one second, go down and hit that subscribe button and I would be really, really appreciative. Thank you. Right, let's jump into the video. Right, mate, you looking forward to this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some fun. So, game improvement blade. We're going to start off with the game improvement, which is the Cobra Dark Speed. Obviously, their game improvement iron, 27 degrees in loft. So, very strong. Very strong. I think a lot of people will know I'm not a massive fan of these kind of irons, being brutally honest. So really, we're interested today. I mean, it'd be interesting to see, obviously, the difference. We're expecting a large difference in distance because that's two clubs stronger than the blade. Mm -hmm. But we're really interested in his miss hits. Like, what? Because people think you're just going to get killed with a blade if you miss hit it. What's the drop off going to be compared to that? That's what I'm interested in seeing. Okay. So let's, let's have a hit, mate. Cool. You did say that's a bit of your miss, isn't it? That yeah, bit lefty. I mean, definitely that's definitely a true. bit. Yeah, pulling a bit left recently. Yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah, it's like a rocket. I mean, that that is straight away why the whole element of forgiveness would be is not one dimensional, like whatsoever. So for you, even though you're sort of a mid to, mid handicap, so sixteen, isn't it? Mid handicap. You would say the most forgiving irons would be great, more forgiveness, but that's not strictly true for you. If yeah. you miss left, that's a very low spin iron. That's spun at 3,700 3, was that? And it's just low, it's hot, it's curving, it's gonna come yeah. in hot, long left, like, ugh. So for someone like you, I would always want to err on the side of having a bit more spin. Yeah, okay. Because it's gonna make that miss a little bit better. <laughs> cool. Good, it's a good shot, mate. Little drawery, but it's just hot, isn't it? Like it's so yeah. It's such a hot ball flight. Yeah, a little bit out of the toe. Um, still did well. Still carried one seventy one. Again, you know, for your swing speed, we we really should not be carrying it one seventy. Obviously, I mean, <laughs> one seven two. I think it's like the average seven iron on the PJ Tour, and they would be swinging ten, twelve, thirteen mile an hour faster than you. But obviously, getting that distance from. Very low backspin, 3,200 that was. Yeah. Again, like, so that peaked to 82 feet, mm -hmm. descent angle 41. So in the summer, it's coming in and that is, whew, yep. that's gone. Yep. That is not good. That sounded striped to be fair, mate. <laughs> that sounded really good. That was flush. It is about that 170 carry, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that was a really good strike. That's perfect location. I know it looks thin for anyone watching, but it's not. That's perfect. Eight mil low. Okay. Again, it's just that backspin is so low. 3,800 backspin. It's just, and again, for a seven iron, obviously, you kind of look at that ball fly and go, actually, it's not horrendous. December was about 44, peak height 92. Not terrible. You could maybe get away with that on your very best shots. On your misses, it's going to be bad. Again, it's going to go further left as you turn it over yeah. more, face closed, spin drops even more. Terrible. You imagine that's the seven and it's spinning at that. Let me go to the six, five, four. Jesus, the four and five iron, they're going to be like whew, missiles. Yeah. It'll be like a two iron off the tee. Great in the summer off the tee, come into greens. No, not good. Again, great strike. Striping that thing. Yeah. Just, just like. Just again, it's just too hot. 
Um, but again, that's, that's not what this is not a fitting. That's not what we're interested yeah. in. Um, again, it's a little bit toey, but it still did well. You know, still yeah. one six five carry. Yeah, just I just that ball flight's horrible. Mm -hmm. Seventy five feet, forty descent. It's just. Phew. That's, that's a big reason. I mean, you've got a reasonable amount of speed as well, 80 club speed. So it's not mega quick, but it's not slow. It's, you know, it's, de it's decent speed. Okay. Um, for anyone with even slower speed, you're just going to generate even less spin and less height. Right. So that, that's why, especially these sort of game improvement islands for slower swing speed players, hate them. Right? <laughs> Absolutely hate them. <laughs> There's one. That was not good. <laughs> that was like low heel. Definitely low. Couldn't tell you heel or toe. I think it was a bit heely. Yeah, low heel. Yeah. Which again, it wasn't, you know, any, if we hit any really bad ones, we'll take them out of this test. Okay. Um, you know, like proper tops, proper shanks, anything like that. Like that was, that wasn't great, but that's a shot that, you know, on course, you catch a little bit low, a little bit heely. Mm -hmm. uh, one, three, two carry. So realistically, that's a 40 yard drop off, isn't it? Yeah. Which is a lot. And that's probably one of the best shots you've hit. Yep. Yeah, it was nice, mate. Again, 8 mil low, which is about perfect. Very slightly toey, but not bad. It's like 1 4 1 efficiency. Like, that's really what I'd expect to see out of like a 5 iron, which is accurate realistically because that almost is like a 5 iron. It's like 27 degrees traditionally. So this blade that we're about to hit at the minute is 34. The five iron in this set probably be 27. Right. So that's basically the five iron in this set. So it's not terrible numbers for a five iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, so people would say, well, just it doesn't matter what it says on the bottom. It's how far it goes that matters. Yes and no, because one thing you'll find is with strong lofted irons, all they do is they budge the seven iron closer and closer down to the four iron. So if you look at the difference between the four and the five iron, like online, which I probably got up on here actually somewhere, What's the difference between the four and the five iron? Um, so the four iron's 18.5, which is basically a two iron. So that pretty much rules out anyone low speed playing a four iron. Even you, you wouldn't play a four iron in that set. So you don't have a four iron. Five iron's 21, that's still borderline. Maybe not even playing a five iron because it might still be too strong in loft. Um, and then, yeah, you've got a pitch, you got a seven iron at 27. Pitching wedge is 42 and a gap wedge is 47 and a half. So you start to find much bigger gaps up at the wedge end and much smaller gaps down at like the four or five iron end. So it basically means, yeah, long irons you can't even play and the, the wedges you've got a massive gap in. It's just, it, it just doesn't work. Like to me, it doesn't make sense. Right, so you said you never hit a blade before. Never. Ever. And yeah, from a forgiveness standpoint, you obviously never would think about doing it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically only expecting this to be a good shot if it comes straight out the middle of the club. So I don't know whether that's true or not. Well, we'll find out in a minute, won't we? We will. How does that look compared to the dark speed it down looks, by the ball? It looks really nice. It's a lovely looking club, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and a little bit smaller top line. <laughs> scary. <laughs> so 34 degrees in loft. Okay. Um, so like we said, the dark speed 7 iron is basically the 5 iron set in that. So realistically, if we take all of the tech out of the dark speed, we'd expect two clubs difference, right? Because that's the five iron in that set. Two clubs difference. So if we were flying that 170 on a really good one, probably 165 sort of average. So we'd expect this to go carry maybe 145, right? Maybe 150 on a really good one if we're taking tech out of it. So that really should go further loft for loft because of the tech, right? Okay. If we had a five iron in that and a five iron in that at the same loft, you know, the dark speed should go further because of all this tech. Let's just take that out on this hope. We haven't hit any of this yet. Hope this is going to go 145 on a semi decent one. Right, okay. Let's find out. So let's move the screen to 145. Actually, we'll put, it, we'll put the pin at 150. Sounded a bit cleaner, that one. Sounded a bit cleaner. Okay, good, there we go. So 11 mil, so still a tiny bit low in the head, but not bad, pretty good, better. Efficiency, you're still getting loads of efficiency out of it. Because again, we turned it over a smidge. Again, the face was not seven degrees closed. The quad is reading. It does this on very, very specific clubs. Sometimes, I don't know why, it'll read the face randomly closed. I think there must be a, some kind of glint on the face. There's something okay. on the face that's causing it to read a bit too closed. So it wasn't that closed. 
Um, but instantly, much better numbers, like 21 launch, 5,100 backspins at least. We're up in the fives in backspin now. It's still a bit on the low side for a seven iron. The way you deliver it is reasonably low spin delivery. Um, but we're at 90 feet, 46.4 descent. So that's a much better ball flight than, yep. you know, especially some of the ones with the dark speed where it was coming in uh, probably sub 40s, <laughs> low. Nice. Okay, it was probably a little skinny. Yeah, so actually wasn't too bad to be fair. That wasn't too bad. But I love those numbers really. I mean, you slowed the swing speed down there actually a little bit, 76, where we're normally sort of high 70s, 80. So that would be a little bit of a reason why we lost a tiny bit of uh, carry on there. Yeah. But even with that, 142 in relationship to the seven iron of that, it's still not that far off at all. And I actually really like those numbers. So the 135 efficiency, Perfect for a seven iron. So that just basically means for how fast you're swinging, we're getting the right amount of ball speed. Okay. If I see that up over 1.4, I'm thinking this is not gonna create a balanced set. We want every iron to sit where it should in relation to everyone else to get good gap in. Again, launches up at 22, backspins at 55, hence why that stopped a lot quicker. Um, yeah, 46.6% 6 again, so over that 45%, which is great. Much more balanced ball flight, much more control coming into the greens, much better. Then sounded like a little bit low and skinny. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We lost about what, 10 yards versus the last one. Yep. Low yeah. healy. Yeah. It, it definitely wasn't as bad. I mean, the graph there probably would show it wasn't a million miles off when we hit the one with the dark speed earlier. Remember, like the low heel one we hit with that? Yeah. So the one we hit with the dark speed earlier was 10 mil heel, 19 mil low. That was 11 mil heel, 17 mil low. So actually, pretty comparable, to be honest. And the efficiency drop off was, you know, fairly similar. Wet went down to 1.22, whereas the dark speed went down to 1.25. So actually, that probably was quite comparable. And there we can see, I mean, best to worst, it's at 28 yards, the 158, the first one, which was maybe even a bit fat, maybe while the spin dropped, turned over, long left, spin dropped. So that's 28 yards front to back, really, from similar hits. Pretty similar, wasn't it? Yep. I mean, what do we have, 171 with the dark speed, down to 132, that's 40 yards. Hmm. Yeah. So you get a 40 yard drop off with the dark speed versus a 28 yard drop off with the blade. With very comparable strikes, in my opinion. Um, and this is the one thing with the game improvement, and this is what I wanted to see, like front to back, because when you really nut that dark speed, especially if you get it turning over, ball speed is obviously higher, the spin drops massively, it goes miles. And then with a miss hit, you can obviously drop off as much depending on how bad the miss hit was, right? That's why it's quite good that that was quite comparable mm -hmm. to see what the drop off was. So because the dark speed goes so far on a good one, when you drop off, the front to back is massive. Mm -hmm. Actually with something like that, all right, it's not, definitely not going to go as far, obviously on a good one, but the drop-off's way less. So what are your thoughts so far on hitting an out-and-out -out muscle back blade against the game improvement iron? So it's nowhere near as bad as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, bad's not the right word. It's difficult to hit yes. as I was expecting it to be. 100%. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting concept to me as well. I think a lot of it could be like psychology, because yeah. you look down at Blade and you think, oh, oh no, like, I'm not gonna be able to hit this, and that might tie into a nervous swing. But in terms of like the face, heel to toe, it's probably slightly smaller in the game group, but not low. So you think really, there's less mass behind it, like we know, like this, the sole of the back speed's massively chunky and into an weight and all that kind of stuff. Not that the head mass is different, but the weight position is different. So, but if you make a good swing and you, and you kind of strike it somewhere near okay, that's still gonna be absolutely fine, right? Yeah. And even on miss hits, it's actually much better than people think. Modern day blades, it's not like blades back in the day, right. like 20, 30, 40 years ago, you miss it, you really felt it. Yeah. These are so much better now, to be honest. They're really not bad at all. Yeah. I might go in the hole. <laughs> go on. Yeah, it's a lovely shot, mate. Lovely shot. Very nice. Yeah, it's kind of a tiny bit high up on the face, that one. 
Mm. But not bad. Again, it's just so spin drops because we hit it slightly higher on the face, which is fine. Efficiency still good. Descent still good. Ball flight's much better. I mean, literally, if you said to me, regardless of handicap, which iron am I going to take out and play with? Probably wouldn't say go any lower than a seven in the blade, but just in, in the context of this test, that's a much better club for you than the dark speed is. Yeah. Like way better, which is crazy. Yeah. Well, not to me, but probably it's to you. It is definitely to me. Again, it didn't quite sound like you caught that no. one. Again, like the drop off is really not that bad at all, is it? No. Yeah, low heel. Yep. And it's, it's just ones like this, right, that are super interesting. Yeah. That, that didn't sound good. It, it's not a good strike. Actually, the launch and spin numbers are still good. So ball flight probably still wasn't terrible. 80 feet in the air, 45 descent. That's not that bad. And one, three, seven carry. So, you know, if you were playing that somewhere around that 145 to 150 mark, it's about a 10-yard drop off, which for a low heel, you're going to get out of every club, regardless, yeah. you know? So I just honestly think the front-to-back dispersion would be so much better with that than the dark speed. Yeah. Sounded nice. That's, a That's lovely. That's a great shot, that, mate. Cheers. Ooh. 152 carry was that. Yeah, it's a really good strike. Nice, mate. Really good. <laughs> 136. Again, even with that, the spin's around sort of 5K. So again, even with a blade, you're spinning it a little lower than I'd like, but 93 peak, 47 descent. Like that's now what I'm talking about. That's yeah. so much better. So much better. Um, and yeah, 152 carry. Yeah, that's, that's really, really good. <laughs> right, so now after that test, wh which one do you think you would take out on course? This, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Which is absolutely, well, it's probably, I assume, not what you thought would be the outcome yeah. at all. No, not at all. You but, thought the blade would just kill me, wouldn't be able to hit it. Yeah. Same as every other mid handicapper out there. Yeah. Which is, yeah, interesting. Super, super interesting. And good. That's why I love doing tests like this, opening people's eyes a little bit more to the reality of situations. Um, right. So, again, the last, last shot with that was amazing with the, uh, the MB. So, let's dive into the data and have a look what's going on. So, comparing ball flight data and distance, obviously, as we said earlier, that. Cobra blade is the same loft as the five iron. No, sorry, the dark speed seven iron is the same loft as that five iron. So that five iron is 27 degrees. The blade, five iron, 27 degrees. The dark speed, seven iron, also 27 degrees. <laughs> so we would expect it to be two clubs less, even without talking tech, as I said earlier, and it is two clubs less. So again, even though the tech so it would say that that should go way further, do more ball speed, et cetera, et cetera, it's still gapping exactly the same as per the loft would suggest. So it's doing exactly what it should do. Um, even the ball speed difference is exactly what we'd expect. Seven mile an hour for about seven degrees difference. So we're not seeing a massive jump in ball speed from the dark speed, really relative loft for loft. Definitely seeing more launch and more spin. Of course, again, loft is going to have a lot to do with that but that head design also will spin a little bit more. Game improvements are generally very, very low spin. You can see there, 3,700 backspin on average to 4,900 backspin on average with the MB. Still a little bit low for a seven iron, even with the blade, but a lot, lot better. Mm. And yeah, 20 yards on average carry, which again, exactly what we'd expect. Front to back, better dispersion with the blade, as I kind of thought would be. Um, just because the long, long ones with the dark speed were going absolutely miles and then drop off, you're going to get, still going to get a good drop off on this hit. Like, yeah. so yeah, like there was it 38 yards, big front to back and slightly worse left to right too. So dispersion, definitely a lot better with the blade. As you can see, the standard deviation on the carry is tighter, only a bit, but it is tighter. Even standard deviation across the board is, is probably slightly tighter, uh, with the blade which again, people probably wouldn't expect. So yeah, all in all, better ball flight, better dispersion, better front to back, better miss, more control, more stopping power, everything a lot better with the blade and the miss hit and drop off absolutely nowhere near as much as you would expect, which again, interesting, right? Mm. Um, 
And yeah, average ball flight. So even with a couple of bad ones in there with the blade that we miss it, sort of 64 peak height, uh, 75 peak height, we're still averaging 83 peak 45%. And I would argue you probably hit a couple worse with the blade than you did with the dark speed, to be honest. And um, with the dark speed, we're averaging 76 feet and 40 descent. So way, way better descent angle with the MB, again, coming from more launch and more spin. Peak height is not massively different, to be fair. It's only seven feet difference, but the descent angle was five degrees difference. That's a massive difference when it's going to come stopping power. A lot of that is coming from the spin. More spin is good. More spin is your friend, really. Um, so, yeah, what did you kind of think of, of, of all that surprising? Yeah, massively surprising. Like I said, I thought that I wouldn't be able to hit the blade yep. unless it came completely out of the middle. Yeah. And that wasn't the case no. at all. No, not at all. Even like the low heel ones. I, was, I actually think that Cobra blade is really good. Mm. I said the, the more modern blades, definitely not of like the blades of the past, yep. which were proper butter knives. Still a small head, small profile, but honestly, the miss hits are so much better on them now. Like really good. Um, so again, it just goes into showing that don't buy based on handicap ranges. Don't buy based on forgiveness because it's not necessarily the case. That's a more forgiving club for you than the dark speed, like period. And I think a lot of people would find that. You know, the reality is between those two, I'd say play that. I wouldn't fit you for that. You know, if you came in, obviously I would go in between as we kind of discussed. I think I would go something that I could get traditionally lofted, but still has a little bit of help there. Hollow body, Apex Pro, P770, perfect. 33 degrees, standard seven iron loft, probably crank it weak to 34 to get it somewhere similar to that in terms of loft, try and get the launch up, spin up. Mm -hmm. We want that same amount of kind of uh, control coming into the greens, but those heads are still hollow body. So you're still gonna get a nice little bit of help. And I feel like you could play that all the way through the set, probably from five iron for you up to pitching wedge. And yeah, I think it'd be a really good set. So yeah, very interesting test. So I really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it too. Any questions, post them below. I think we gave Steve a little bit of a shock there. Never having hit a blade before, being a mid-handicap golfer, like, why would he? But it's really good to see and show that the idea of forgiveness is not one-dimensional. So when we talk about mishitting, getting better results on mishits, fine, that is a little bit of forgiveness. But the club design of that dark speed for Steve, being low spin, a bit easier to turn over, the longer left becomes more in play, which is a way worse miss. That was far less forgiving in reality for him than even a blade, which again, no one would really say. And yeah, really interesting test. Really, really enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned, much more coming. Please subscribe as always, and I'll see you in the next one.